Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime branding on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And well, Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So, if you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So at the time of recording this, I have not made my review yet. Uh, maybe by the time you listen to this, uh, you will have my review. I am not 100% sure. I think the segment's going up uh, about a week from the day we're recording it. Uh, so chances are the review should be up by then. If it's not, then I'm not doing a very good job with my first ever video review. Nice. But uh, instead of focusing on my thoughts on it, because I feel like I'm going to express a lot of it in my review... Uh, you guys have both played a bunch of it, and I'm actually well. You played some, yeah. Um, I'm I'm actually interested in what you guys have to think about Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and let's try to keep this as spoiler free as we can. <laughs> um, I am going to note for anyone that that go that watches my review later, uh, there's going to be spoilers. I'm I'm not even going to bother to avoid it. So mm-hmm. the game the game's been out for two well, weeks. Well, it at needs this point, to be so. well, on a review. I can understand. As long as it's a disclaimer. Well, yeah, it's going to yeah. be a disclaimer at the beginning. Right. I'm going to let people right. know, hey, look, if you don't want spoilers, don't watch. Well, and, and that's the thing, though. It, to, in order and I'm to, not spoiling everything. To review something, you almost have to have spoilers in it. it it's, it's Yeah, I heard a lot of people that, say, like, I just want to review this completely spoiler the free. I'm like, so you just want me to say, make a quick 10 second video, it's good! Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right, it's exactly. Good. Like, yeah. no, I want to critique well, it. I want to dive deep into well, it. You got, you're going to learn spoilers about it. Theoretically, so. we've already had technically spoilers to begin with because even before the game is out because any gameplay shown is technically a spoiler before it comes out that's true <laughs> logic so yeah, whatever <laughs> anyways i'm just like my review is gonna have spoilers but we're gonna try to keep this spoiler free so maybe we'll call this maybe the spoiler free review of Mario plus rabbit's game of battle right um but yeah what are you guys thoughts on the game so far like well ahead. first off first off how, how far in the game are you Eric? Uh, I am through the first world. So you're, you're yeah. starting world two? Yeah. I'm, I'm starting the desert world. Yep. So. Okay. And how about you, Michael? I'm halfway through world three. Cool. I think I'm just slightly ahead of you on in world, in world three okay. at the time of recording. I'm trying so hard to get to that boss. I heard he's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling he's going to be my favorite boss in the game. Um, but again, I won't... I, this, here's the thing. I already know it's going to be cool, and I haven't even got there yet. Why? Because I read some oh, reviews. I don't, I don't even know what the boss is yet. So. I, read, I read some reviews. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, that's why I know um, a lot of other people are excited about the boss in World 3. Anyways, all right, so that's context. So I am a little bit ahead of Michael. I'm about three-quarters of the way through World 3. Uh, he's about halfway, and Eric's just entering World 2. Um, and if you don't know what any of that means, that's fine. Mm-hmm. All the better. Then this isn't any sort of spoilers for you. <laughs> Because um, you don't even know there's worlds. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, Mario, then it technically Mario, is a spoiler. It's then. a Mario game. Come on. Well, then it is a spoiler. Yeah. If they don't know if there's worlds. Everything's a spoiler. <laughs> I said as spoiler free as we can be. Right. Uh, so, Michael, let's start with you since... Actually, Eric, we'll start with you because you're not right. as far in the game. What are your thoughts so far? Um, This game is exactly what I thought it was going to be. Which and is? Amazing. It, 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 the second I heard... There was a crossover. I, first off, I absolutely love Rabbids. I've been on record saying that from when I first heard this concept. I wonder if you're the only person in the world that loves Rabbids. <laughs> hey. That's over the age of ten. Hey, <laughs> these guys are awesome. I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny. I'm a child. I am a child. I know the movies you always <laughs> want to go to, unless it's a war hero movie, is uh, like let's go to the new Disney movie. Let's go to the new this hey, and that. Yeah. Let's go to Cars Eight. Like, no, God, yeah, not the Cars movie. No, then. no, but. Good movies. Yes. Um, we'll but, say uh, you, like Frozen. <laughs> hey, that's a good movie. It is a good movie. So, uh, no, uh, the second I saw gameplay footage of it, and it reminded me so much of XCOM, and then 
you, you get it, and it feels exactly like XCOM. Have you ever played an XCOM game? Yeah. It, yeah? Yeah, XCOM and any unknown. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I absolutely love that game. Okay. No, I wasn't saying that, yeah. like, oh, you haven't yeah, yeah. played XCOM. I'm actually yeah, 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 yeah. Was legit curious if you yeah. had. I really want to get XCOM, too, but I just... Again, time. <laughs> Why does this happen? You yeah, already got it. Uh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, but I absolutely love it. It it's it's got the goofiness of the the, the rabbits and the great feel of Mario, and and that gameplay is almost identical to XCOM. So, <laughs> you're all sight, baby. Yeah, right. Um, Michael, what do you got? What do you think about the game so far? Um. Well, I've never played a Rabbids game before, so I was going into that fresh. Um, I love the characters, um, especially the Rabbids characters. Peach, I, I love Peach. She's <laughs> her oh, everything she does is just is just hilarious. great. I've probably taken maybe three dozen screenshots of her <laughs> taking screenshots. <laughs> Selfies. <laughs> Selfies everywhere. Um uh, the plot I find very interesting. Um, it's it was kind of hard to figure out at first, like the full direction of it. But then you know, once some other characters showed up, without going into spoilers, mm-hmm. um, it became easier, and now it's all flowing really well. Um, I feel that there's like like this adult versus child kind of mentality, where it's like the Mario universe is like this adult, but yet the Rabbids is like this child, and I think it's a really good balance between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what's weird when you when you mentioned that I was just talking to Eric briefly about this earlier because I just realized um, at the at the point I am in the game that Beepo the the thing you drive around the little Roomba mm-hmm. it uh <laughs> the Roomba. I swear yeah. that it swears in the game oh yeah but like obviously it's bleeped out child friendly blah 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 yeah. but it's clearly like if you insert the f word where it's all bleeped out that's what it's saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. like every time, and I'm just like, huh? What? I mean, I get that like a kid who doesn't know the language isn't gonna get it. Sure. But, but you know, it, it's a very like you know Disney kind of move where like you have these adult themes in there, but like kids. I was don't just get thinking it, that don't mm-hmm. get it till they're older. But like this is a very direct, like <laughs> it's not like some hidden in the background thing or like a minor reference. No, this thing is like saying f off and. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like, or like he gets really frustrated at one point and he's like what the bleep and i'm like okay come on i'm like i'm fine i'm 31 it's cool i think yeah. this is hilarious but i'm just like wait a second what's this game rated again right is it is this uh t for teen or what yeah. what's happening here i know he's not actually swearing but they're really they're getting awful close to making it very obvious that, that, that toe is right on the line there oh uh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just so when you're bringing up like that that battle between adult and child, it's really weird too because Mario has always been kind of sort of more child friendly, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. at least in terms of the characters. Obviously, you know you can argue the gameplay is obviously you know especially in the 3D games is favored adults or or at least older kids. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Go on. I'm sorry. I just as soon as you said child, I was like, wait a second. That really reminds me. Yeah. Swearing. What the? Yeah. What the bleep? <laughs> Yeah, especially with uh, Toad and Toadette. <laughs> oh my gosh, Toad and Toadette. <laughs> yes, folks, sorry, Toad and Toadette are in the game. Oh my god, Toad and Toadette are in a Mario game! Whoa, Spoilers. Spoilers. that wasn't spoiler Spoilers. because that's happened since like, the beginning. Spoiler! <laughs> I don't know if Toadette was in the... Was Toadette there in the beginning? I don't remember. I know Toad was. Um, Anyways, one. go on. I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> well, you were saying a blend of the two franchises, child versus adult. That's all I remember. Yeah. Um, the battle system I really like um, because a per- any any individual can go into it and it can be completely different for them and how they move, how they battle, where they shoot, where they use mm-hmm. defensive, where they put whatever. Um, I really like that because then it almost gives you like multiple uh, playthroughs if you want to go back yes. or if you want a better score or you know what what have you in most of those types of games. So I also thought it was interesting, especially now that I'm I'm deeper in. I didn't notice it as much at first, but all the characters are unique. Okay, so like, oh, very much. Um, I mean, there are two that have kind of similar, but then there's like this massive difference in other things they do, and you don't really realize it early on, I guess, because you know you start out with the, the base group and then you slowly add to it, and mm-hmm. it's it's weird because for the longest time I was just smashing my way through the game, smashing my way, smashing my way. And then when I got to World 3, I started realizing how much I need to vary up my teams, sometimes battle by battle. 
Because, mm-hmm. um, like, I was getting frustrated. I would even, yes, this game has an easy mode. Put it on easy mode and still just get my butt whooped if I just kept using the same team I'd always use. I developed these uh-huh. strategies with these teams that don't work against some of the enemies. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or don't work very well, even when you're trying to easy mode power through it with extra health. Because that's literally, just so folks know, all easy mode is, is extra health. It doesn't make you hit harder. It doesn't make the enemy AI any worse. It's just, we give you 50% extra health. <laughs> All right. And if you're still getting your butt whooped before you even got halfway through the map, then you're probably only going to get three quarters of the map and still get your butt whooped. Yeah. Um, so, like, it, it was just really interesting. <clears throat> like, the battle I just passed, I'm not going to go into too many details about what the specifics of it, but I had to completely change up my group. And... The only, the only, I don't even know if this is a spoiler. You have to use Mario every time. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter what, he's in. And I feel like, uh, at least so far, maybe my mind will change by the end of it, that I don't like that. That you can't swap out Mario. Right. Um, I understand he's the mascot. I get it. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom out of Rabbids. There's no specific one rabbit that is a mascot, but Mario is the mascot of Mario. Uh, but you could argue the the one rabbit that they're trying to Which one? You start off with two. Hmm? Start off with two rabbits in the game. No, 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 no. The one that they're trying to get. Oh. You could argue that that's That's no. No. Yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. Um <laughs> anyways. But, no, there is a – I wish that they would have just made it so you are required to always have one rabbit character mm-hmm. and one Mario character, whether it's, you know, whoever, you know, mm-hmm. Luigi or whoever, or your princess or, or whatever. Like, I, it's – I would like to have more – because I feel like when you lock into Mario, you need to always build your team around him. And I think there is some cool strategy to that. But I think at some point the game just needs to be like, look – you can now use any of them, just here's your restriction now. You, you can't just use straight you know, Mario characters or straight rabbit characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the only thing I think is frustrating right now. It, it, it's not saying like Mario's a good character. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not mm-hmm. like it's someone you wouldn't want to use, but there might be certain battles, and I can even think of some that I've already experienced where I'm like, I really wish I could have swapped out Mario for this other character. Because mm-hmm. uh, this other character really just fits that situation better than Mario does. Mm-hmm. Because like, like Mario's base attack is very similar to some other characters, but then Mario gains advantages in other ways. Um, but it's like, you know, do I want to have, you know, two characters on the the field that have the same abilities where I can have three different characters that have completely different abilities and all complement right. each other. Um, and that that's, it feels weird criticizing like, Oh man, I'm criticizing a Mario game for making me play as Mario. <laughs> um, right. Right. But this is that one kind of game where, yeah, I, I feel like you should. And I feel like when, when people think Mario, yes, initially maybe require it, but then back off that requirement because uh, once you get further into the game, you realize, like, even if you've never played Mario before, that Mario has multiple characters, uh, multiple different characters. You know, Luigi, as an example, is one you get early on. And uh, that you could should just be able to play with those characters and set Mario on the sideline. Like, just mm-hmm. like you can in Super Mario Bros. 2. Mm-hmm. And Mario Kart. It's not like people aren't used to this concept of not having to play with Mario in a Mario game. Um, which, you know, Mario Kart is Mario in the name, so sure. No, uh, if Mario right, Kart but, can but, do it, Mario plus Rabbids can do it. But Mario is technically always racing, whether you're playing with him or not, so... Hmm? Yeah, but I don't have to play as him. Right. You don't have to play as but them, you, but, but you could. You have technically to, you, Mario is always well, technically you don't play as any of these characters. You're just Beepo telling them what to do. Right. Yeah. Very true. Very true. <laughs> but still, in a in a game that's all about, um, it's a strategy game. No, oh, yeah. let's just call it what it is. Yeah. It is a strategy game, and mm-hmm. as a strategy game, I feel like you're limiting what my possible strategies are. Right. In that sense, uh, but again, maybe it does change. I don't know. I'm not. I haven't beaten the game. You know, maybe mm-hmm. I get what I want. Or maybe when you beat the game, you get that. When you go back to the challenges, you can change up all your characters. I have no idea. Um, I, I didn't... Maybe it says it in a review somewhere, if you can or not. I don't know, but I you know, I just kind of had like watched some reviews and had it on in the background. Like I, mm-hmm. I tried not hard... Because I didn't want the game to be completely spoiled for me, and I understand 
uh, the, the sentiment out there of people wanting quote-unquote spoiler-free re- reviews. Or what do people tell me? I want a completely objective review. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I'm just like, so what do you want me to tell you? Just the facts? It, it's good. It's 1080p. It's 30 FPS. It's good. <laughs> built on the Snowdrop engine. Ubisoft made it. It has these characters in it. Uh, what well, else? That might be spoiler, too. No, no, it doesn't matter. It's objective. Oh, yes. There's X amount of worlds. I'm just telling you that. Yes. Here's how many worlds there are. I, here's the names. One, two, three. Spoiler. Whoop. Okay. Yep. And, yep, here are the facts. Um, it is a strategy game, and you move people around. <laughs> right. how, much, how many more facts would you like? Now, do you want to know if the game's any good? Can't tell you. Yep. It's not objective. <laughs> nope. <laughs> So, yeah, I never understood when people say, I want, I want the most objective review possible. It's like, I think I know what you mean. It, yeah. You don't mean what you think you mean. Right. Um, you just want me to eliminate <laughs> certain bias. This word. I, I, I do not think it means what you think it does. No. Well, here, and here's what I have to say about reviews, even as we're talking now. Um, all of us come with a certain bias. Oh, yeah. Everything we do in life mm-hmm. is, is based on our own experiences. What we enjoy is based on our experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, even if there's things, you, you, I mean, you've got some people, oh, I've never played an XCOM game. Am I going to like this? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not you. You know? Um, I've played XCOM. I haven't played a lot of it, so I, I'm probably, like, I am like yeah. have very little experience. Um, and I'm enjoying it so far, but it, it's like, it, it's, no matter what I say in the review, no matter what any of us say about the game in general, we can't tell you if you personally are going to like it. Right. Michael, have you played any um, XCOM games? Nope. No? There you go. I, I highly recommend at least yeah, Enemy if, Unknown. If you like this game, XCOM. At least at least XCOM Enemy Unknown. That's... XCOM 2 it's, is... Yeah, I, I saw yeah. videos of it. It looks amazing. Yeah, because... Uh, I don't want to say that this game is exactly like XCOM, but... It, it's pretty it's, close. It's pretty close. And... The only other thing I'll say, and, and again, I don't consider it a spoiler because it's not story related. I'm just not giving away any specific gameplay stuff. Um, if anybody out there thinks that this is easy, let me tell you, the game lulls you into thinking it's easy. <laughs> the difficulty spikes are crazy. It's very random. You will go from one battle where it's like a cakewalk, all of a sudden the next battle... You're dead before you even got past turn two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And I get it. it's a strategy game, right? You got everyone like I remember I put some gameplay up on some other videos. Like, Have you ever played a strategy game before? I'm like, yeah, but this is a new game, and I have to die to realize what the best strategies are. Right. Um, mm-hmm. It's not like I plan to die. I carefully mm-hmm. go high behind cover. I carefully do this. Carefully do that. All of a sudden, this enemy has a new ability you never even knew about. And you just get destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sit there in awe wondering what just happened yeah like I, what <laughs> sorry spoilers. you know like early like earlier today i said you know even on easy mode i died to this battle wasn't even a boss battle i died to it like six or seven times before i finally realized the best way to tackle that map because all the maps are different mm-hmm. um and you got to get the right combination of abilities you know uh that they are you know they have snipers just like you have snipers they have bomb throwers just like you have bomb throwers like there's a lot of of counters to to what you put out there and again that's one reason why i hate the fact that i have to use mario because like you enter a map and like every enemy is a counter to mario <laughs> that basically be like okay mario you just have to sit back and try to pot shot people good luck yeah, because right? every, all the other guys in the team can shoot twice as far as you yeah Yay. and can move twice as fast and oh my gosh um it, it it's just a lot of a lot of people i think um Assume that Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, even if you knew it was a strategy, even if you knew it was based on XCOM, kind of the, the style of XCOM, that they, they just thought, oh, this will be like a nice introductory game to get people into uh, strategy games, and then they'll upgrade to X- XCOM down the line. Let me tell you, as someone who has played a bunch of XCOM mm-hmm. and a bunch of Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle now, it, it, it is not even like Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is not baby compared to XCOM. It is, like, yeah. on par. Oh, yeah. In fact, I had an easier time playing through and beating the main parts of XCOM than I did right now. I- I've died more times right. so far in Mario Plus Rabbit and Kingdom Battle than I died in XCOM 2 the first time through. Right. It also depends what level you're on. But well, the, the, the difficulty spikes in XCOM are almost identical, too, where yeah. you go into one battle and all of a sudden it's like, you just get wrecked. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? Like, like okay. people know, oh, simplified. There's nothing simplified. 
in yeah. this. This is very much, you have to think carefully about how you spell, spend skill points and th- think carefully about which weapon you want to equip. Just because, you know, this is the most expensive weapon, you know, for your character doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for that fight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to, because there are all these different things like balance and honey and stone. And well, what's the difference between all of them? Inking people. What, what's the whatever one? There's one where like you suck the life force out of people. Like, you got to think about all these sub abilities and spoilers. No, it's yeah, okay. Spoilers. No, it, it's whatever. Like there's so much you have to think about in this game. Oh yeah. Um, that it's not any different than XCOM. Like if people thought this is baby mode, no. Is it going to get people into strategy games? I hope so. Right. I hope that gets an XCOM to the Switch. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, honestly, people are talking about oh, get Mario plus Rabbit people to come over to XCOM. How about some XCOM players come over to Mario plus Rabbit Kingdom Battle? Oh yeah. It is, but you, but you know that type of strategy is something that I'm finding as a new person into this that I'm really enjoying. That I have to like almost think you know five or six steps ahead. Mm-hmm. You do to see even, how even it's going to play out. If I you know if I do this, then this happens, and that happens, and they're going to do this, and how do I counter that? Yeah, and it's it's it really makes you think as sure. opposed to just walk in and pull out your sword and smash them with. Yeah, it's it totally different dead. than. Uh... Like, cause Fire Emblem, that's another strategy game with the grid like grid like yeah. aspect moving characters around healing, blah, blah blah blah. But that has a very different playing style compared to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And just like those games have very different playing styles from Advance Wars, another you know tactile strategy game. And the thing is, is Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle does not have a very different feel from XCOM. It is XCOM. With, oh yeah, with Mario. With Mario. It's a Mario skinned XCOM with a very <laughs> interesting story. Um, yeah. The, as Michael said, kind of confusing at the start, but mm-hmm. it starts to make sense. I I don't even completely make sense, but I'm further than him. But I, I I'm piecing some things together with it, which is I think <laughs> yeah. a really cool approach to how they did the story. Um, well, and there's so many other little details as you walk around oh, and you so look many. at your surroundings so right, and many. see what's happening. So many, like they, like I'll, I'll just say this is for all the little fine details, they're they're fantastic. This game is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. I don't care what anybody says, you know, about how oh, Switch is underpowered and this and that. Play this game, and just look at the water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, look at the lighting. Like you're like, oh, but it's Mario and rabbits. Like those aesthetics are easy. I'm like, I'm sorry. This is beyond any Mario or Rabbids game I've ever seen. Yeah, those aesthetics are easy, but the world itself is the world just, itself. It's... And there's just so much going on. Oh yeah, for sure. It, mm-hmm. This game is. You could you could tell me that this is a PlayStation Four Pro game, and I wouldn't know any different. You know, yeah. obviously four K resolution. Oh, but besides that, like, yeah, like uh, seriously, this game, that Snowdrop engine that Ubisoft used, which is their brand new engine that they plan to use for all their future games, including Assassin's Creed and blah blah. blah. They mm-hmm. used it for the the Division. That was the very first game to use it. Mm-hmm. My word. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like, everyone always says, only Nintendo can make these ultra-gorgeous games on Nintendo system. I'm sorry, Ubisoft just did it. And they did it <laughs> better than Nintendo has done it in many yeah. cases. This is, it is such a gore, it, it, it's hard to describe. You just, like, you can watch, even when you're watching my review, the videos don't do it justice because of compression. you just got to see it in person. So, and on oh, that Switch sure. screen, like, even that 720p screen, yep. this looks so, oh, man. It is like I can. It, it feels weird saying, like, oh, it's a Mario game. Of course it looks good. It's a rabbit game. I'm like, yeah, I, we all knew it was going to look good. I didn't think it was going to be this good. Right. This, this to me, the, I know it's minor, the, but it feels next gen. The details that they put into this game oh. are just ridiculous. No, oh, it, it's just, mm, it's another level. It, it really is. As I said, it feels next gen to me, and I know it's current gen. And that's the way it works. But, right. But like when people always talk about, oh, they get the, get the newest system, and what's the game that feels next gen? This feels next gen to me, right? For a, for a mm-hmm. console, mm-hmm. Um, as I said, it would be right. In, it, it would not feel out of place on competitor systems, um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll. You know what? Until Odyssey comes out, I'll go ahead and say this is the best looking Mario game I've ever played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, I mean, think about that. The best looking Mario game ever made wasn't made by Nintendo. Whoops. Well, uh, we'll see. Odyssey might top it. Yeah. It looks good so far. We'll it does. see. It does. But it's a different kind of good, different kind of engine. We'll see. We'll see how it compares. But uh, right. Man, this game. It, it, it's it's pretty good, folks. Uh, if you can't tell, I probably will not have a negative review. 
<laughs> Doesn't mean I don't have criticism. I'm oh, right, right. Obviously, I criticize sure. the Mario thing, but again, I haven't completed the game. All all of my critiques are incomplete. Right. You know, I think the game's gorgeous, but if it all falls apart in the final level, that could ruin everything. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see what happens. But right now, I think it's just very interesting that Ubisoft, a company people like to criticize a lot. A company I even criticize because I don't I don't like what they did with the season pass, um, having eight exclusive items to the season pass. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well those items might not be. You're right. You're not going to use the items forever, but they do give you an advantage right away. They are the best items in the game yep. when you first get them. Yep. Well, so did the pixel items. So did the right. pixel items, yep. yeah. Which apparently were supposed to be a pre-order bonus, but did mm. everybody get it? I don't know. It was inside the box, so I... yeah. I don't know. How do you how do you know which copies are pre-order copy yeah. and which ones Is not? it just certain yeah. retailers? I yeah. I have no idea how that even worked, but I I got mine at GameStop, so I don't know. Maybe we all got it at GameStop. No, I got mine through Amazon. And you got I got mine through Best Buy. Okay, so these three different retailers. So it's not a retailer thing, or maybe it could have been just a first run. Maybe like new versions that get shipped out now don't have it. I don't know. Right. Because yeah. it says yeah. it says like launch exclusive. It says right. something on there about right. being yeah, exclusive yeah, yeah, on yeah. the paper. Yep. Um, but it's like okay. I don't know what that means. I mean, the digital people that get it, that sucks for them. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, seriously, no. I dominated World 1 with those items. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm telling you, folks, they give you an advantage. Like, they are the best weapons in the game at the time. Right. Thankfully, they don't stay that way. Right. But, because uh, that would just be cheap, to be honest. So, did you both get the season passes? No. I have not. I, I, have not. I probably okay. will. I, d- I didn't either. Okay, I was just curious no. if, if you guys did I debated did as well. on... Um, after I beat the game and getting ready to do my review, uh, right before I do that, buying the season pass just so I could play around with those items. Um, sure. And then like, and see if it breaks like, the game like, like in the review, <laughs> in the review, just kind of see like how do they compare to the pixel items? Can ever I'm gonna have to talk to multiple people. Can you get these items even today, or right. was it you know? Right. And, and then kind of freight because because that's the thing. Like, my entire experience in World One was with those items. Right. I don't know what it's like to play it without those items. No, I can go back and play it without those items. Mm-hmm. to give you multiple save files but uh it's still something that i just want to play around with i guess so um yeah i mean i'm I'm not a completionist this is like a perfect game for completionists oh yeah <laughs> i mean why do you think i've only beat world one <laughs> hey you can't even 100 percent world one huh can't yeah you can't no i know well no i can now wait maybe i can't yet i don't know i don't know but I've been running around trying to do things yes. that I can't do. Yes. So even now, as I'm like, I'm trying to rush through the game. I'm not really yeah. rushing through it. I'm just giving myself an excuse to keep playing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but even as like I'm trying to, like I'm really trying to get to this next boss. I it doesn't stop me from exploring. Remember when I I kept complaining about the one part? I'm like, okay, I'm really tired of this. I'm really tired of this. Yeah. it's my own fault. Right. Because I'm trying to find everything. I don't have to do this. It's right. optional yeah. side stuff. It is. It is. <laughs> but I'm just like, I but I'm, do it. I I'm a completionist, so. I got to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's what makes Breath of the Wild such a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. Just do all the shrines. Forget the Korok seeds. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't work for me. Uh, not, not me either. I'm my master mode run. I'm 100% in the game, and it's it's rough. I'm like 100 50 Korok seeds in. That's literally all I've been doing is just Korok seed hunting. My, yeah. my goal is to basically Korok seed hunt and just do the quest as, I, as I'm as i through the land. And then once I'm done with the Korok seeds, then I can go to actually enjoy the game. <laughs> go enjoy the game. <laughs> right. And, and actually do the fun things. <laughs> like yeah. all the all the mini games. And yeah. like yeah. the Korok seed stuff is is just, it's some of it's fun. Some of it's unique. Some of it's really cool. But so much of it's repetitive that it's like, okay, how many more rocks do I have to lift? <laughs> right. Oh, look, there's this <laughs> random rock just sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Hmm, I wonder what this could be. <laughs> Looks suspicious. I mean, my favorite yeah. ones are the ones like, oh, you bowl down a hill, or like the yeah. ones that are like Eventide Island. But like those are those are not the common ones. The common ones are you lift up a random rock that doesn't even look like it's out of place at times, yeah, and there's a core rock. Yeah. You're just like, so every rock in the game, lift them all. I mean, I'm not doing I'm right, using a right. map, okay? I, you can call me a cheater if you want. I'm not truly 100%ing. I'm not discovering it all on my own. Oh, I never said I was there it. to discover it all on my own. I just want my save file to say I 100%, 100%. the game. Yep. Well, actually, there's more to do beyond the 100%, actually. But yeah, whatever. Breath of the Wild's that kind right. of game. It's crazy. Right. And I'm trying to get it all done before the uh, the story DLC comes out. That's not Yeah, yeah, no. It's not going to happen. 
I can already tell you because now I'm playing Marvel's Returns Kingdom Battle <laughs> and like NBA and then, 2K18 is coming out like, and then, really soon. Odyssey. Plus Metroid Samus Returns and Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Odyssey. And now LA Noir is hitting next month. Oh. <laughs> or no, November. So much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, hey, but this is just a lack of games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can't that's complain. True. I can't like what. A, I guess I just got too used to the way you this. Like, I yeah. get a game, I have a year. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to do it for the podcast this week. Uh, I really want to thank Michael for coming on, and uh, thank you so much for your support of our channel on Patreon. Uh, it, it means a lot more than you can even fathom um just it's weird too because you, you also live in wisconsin so yeah so that's, that's our number one yeah. supporters also a wisconsin night <laughs> we are so kind well, to these wisconsin well thank you for letting me come on and and yeah don't worry about it <laughs> oh and just uh just to throw this out there you guys throughout this podcast have probably seen us have like these nintendo prime mugs oh, yeah, yeah. nintendo prime shirts um i don't have any nintendo prime hats or anything yet but uh, I'm going to put a link down to our merch store on every segment of the podcast this week. And uh, you will can go down there. And if you'd like some of them, these mugs are actually really high yeah, they quality. Are, they I did are not, very nice. When, when I got this mug in, I was like, whoa. It's like this, this ceramic outside. It's not like printed on. It's like glossed over. Mm-hmm. And then steel on the inside. It's just it's really nice. Um, <laughs> anyways, so I'll have a link down if you guys want to get some Nintendo Prime theme merch in the description. Obviously, full disclosure, I get a cut of every sale. It's just... I think that's pretty obvious. It's our merchandise. <laughs> right. But got to throw it out there because I don't like misleading people. Um, and, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have much else. This is obviously Eric Moore over here. Uh, oh, this is something that I should mention, um, and I'll probably have to put a mention at the end of each segment, is that uh, if you go to the description below, we also have a download link to the full audio podcast mm-hmm. because we are going back. I'm sure by now you realize this. But we have gone back to segmenting the podcast one topic per day uh, the following week after we record just because uh, we weren't we weren't seeing the kind of numbers we wanted to see on the full long audio podcast version. Uh, probably just because we're smaller and that's just the way it is. People pay more attention to the headlines. Uh, and then they get into what we're saying after they read the headlines. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're just going to go back to segmenting. Uh, but that does not mean you cannot enjoy the full audio podcast. As I said, it is in the description below. It's also on iTunes. Uh, and you can go ahead and download it and listen to it in your cars, listen to it while you work, however you want to do it. Uh, so don't worry. We still have that for you as an audio-only thing. Mm-hmm. Also, I always have to mention, if you would like access to the audio version early, you can also subscribe for $5 a month on Patreon, and that gives you access to the full audio, like exactly what we're putting down in the description, but before we even release a video. Uh, so you can get access to that early. And what's nice about that is because we record on Thursdays, that that early audio version comes out like a couple days later. So that means you're most up to date with the podcast. So mm-hmm. by the time these topics hit during the week, maybe they're not as relevant anymore, but they were relevant if you were a Patreon supporter. So. That's just kind of how it is. Uh, or if you like Michael, you can come on the show. You can come on the show. That's right. $20 a month. I don't even remember if it was Michael's idea or so, someone in the comments mentioned an idea like, why don't you make a higher price tier where people can just come on the show? I'm mm-hmm. like, sure. Yeah. Right and then I, did, I didn't think it was actually ever going to work. And then Michael, yeah, Michael did it. So he's the only one. <laughs> Hey, but that, but that, that is that is okay. We we hope uh, to have your continued support and also everyone else's continued support out there. Even if you can support us monetarily through Patreon uh, or through donating through any of just, our live just streams. Just viewership. Just, just thank you for your view. Thank you for your like or even your dislike. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the, you know, the hopefully you subscribed. I mean, we hope this is the thing you enjoy. Uh, the podcast to me is something I'm very, very, very passionate about very passionate about it is what i want to build this channel around Mm -hmm. i don't want us to be just another news channel i want us to be built around the conversation of being nintendo fans right so that's just my hope and dream hopefully you guys can help make better reality anyways folks i'm nathaniel ruffle jeff that is mr eric moore over there and as always we have Michael not on always, the other not side. As always, but as always, as of this <laughs> yeah, episode, as, always, as, as of this fifth segment of this episode, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have Mr. Michael over there, and thank you so much. We will probably see you in a couple weeks. 
Because <laughs> we haven't... Well, another, another reminder is that, like, we haven't hit our $100 goal yet on Patreon. That's what's going to... That we hit that goal, then this becomes a weekly show. But mm-hmm. right now, we're about every other week. We would love to be weekly. Yeah. But hopefully, you guys help make that happen. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Catch you in the next one.